Praise God. Uh, good morning, Facebook. Um, just want to get straight into the message today. Miss Yvonne is sick feeling, so let's pray for her. Um, let's go ahead and pray, and then uh, we'll get into the message. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you so much just for the opportunity once again to speak your word. We pray that you just open the doors of heaven, Lord God, and let your spirit fall down and let everybody see, know you, and understand your word. And I pray that you just be with us in Holy Spirit and fill us and anoint us and come through on this word, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Uh, so we're starting a series, Spiritually Strong, Part 1, Planted for Endurance. One of the things that uh, is a common theme throughout the Bible that we miss a lot of the times is this endurance. Uh, it is actually a spiritual gift, even. Um, but you know, the Bible in... Romans chapter 6 in the King James, it says we were planted together with him in death. And this planted together with him really grabbed my attention because I realized that we are being planted. And most of the Bible gives forth this picture of uh, farming, planting, sowing, reaping. Uh, many ways the kingdom of God is explained uh, in things that are natural for us to understand if we were farmers and shepherds. Um, but we got to realize what we're doing as a body, and we got to have direction and understand where we're going and what we're doing. Uh, and so many times we, we try to make converts to the gospel, but we fail in discipleship. And we've got to become disciples ourselves that we can disciple others. And, you know, Paul made a statement that really stands out to me, and that is this. Uh, he says that I, Paul, planted and Apollos waters, but it's God who brings the increase. So no matter what, when we're out here preaching the gospel or doing whatever we're doing, we're sowing seeds. It's a good thing. Uh, but there's many times where I've come across people who the seed's already been sown, but they need the water. They need somebody to come and water the seed and build them up and encourage them and, and put them back in the fight to which we're fighting. Uh, so I, you know, I, I, I spent a lot of time uh, out evangelizing and, and I, I tried to figure out what's going on. You know, here in the United States, most of everybody has heard the gospel. And we are building on another man's foundation, right? Uh, and even now, I've come over to here to the, the Free Methodists, and now I'm building on John Wesley's foundation, right? Uh, and then all the pastors that were in this church before me's foundation. Uh, so it's an exciting thing because I'm here to build. You know, I'm ready to build the kingdom of God. Uh, and I really want to set a direction for us as a church, as a people, uh, in our generation, man, we have got to get rooted and grounded in the truth and then be able to operate as the church. Um, so I want to start this message uh, with Ephesians chapter 3. And I want to read verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So it's saying here, you know, and, it, and this kind of brought me back to where we're planted in Christ, uh, in his death. Uh, but the true scope of it is to get rooted in what Paul is saying, this love. Uh, and in 2 Peter, Peter uh, also says something very similar, but he says, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, and self-control, perseverance. 
to per perseverance, to godliness, to godliness, brotherly love, and to brotherly love, agape love. So it's almost like a trajectory that's set for us as a Christian. And I feel like we, we lose direction a lot of time in which way we're going and what we're doing. But this is the uh, scope for our life, that we would become mature in the things of God and grow in the love of God, which passes knowledge that we can be filled with all the fullness of God. Uh, I want to start this journey that we got, and I'm trying to break it down into several pieces instead of trying to give it all at once. So I'm, I'm trying to build a foundation. This is my foundational message to break us into the direction of where we're going. And it's Acts chapter 2, verse 40. And there are some very important things said right here that uh, caught my attention about two years ago. Uh, and then I began to realize that there's something that we're, 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 we're still doing. And let me just read it from the scriptures. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 40. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. That though then though then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day, somebody say that day, that day. about three thousand souls were added to them. So in one day, three thousand souls were added to them, and everybody who received their word and their message of be saved from this perverse generation. He, they baptized them, and it be, they became one with them. But the following scriptures is what really grabbed my attention. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayer. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So this continued steadfastly really caught my attention because not only did the Bible say that 3,000 people were added to the kingdom of God in one day. Somebody said that was a good day, <laughs> right? Uh, man, we could only wish that uh, we come and preach and 3,000 people be saved in one day. Turn away from this perverse generation and be added to the kingdom of God in one day. Uh, but I want you to know, this, this was written many days after uh, this had occurred. Uh, and their report was that they continued steadfastly in the teachings, right? And in the fellowship. Uh, this word steadfastly, uh, me and my wife were practicing earlier how to say it and uh it's a doozy it's um g4342 in your strongest concordance and it's pros car to rio pros car to rio i ain't greek yet but i'm i'm working on i'm telling you i'm working on it i'm like three words in right now <laughs> i'm just kidding praise god uh so this word is steadfastly it says to be earnest towards to a thing to persevere. Be constantly diligent. To attend diligently all the exercises. Or to a person, it's to adhere closely to as a servitor. Attend or give oneself continually upon, continually upon, wait continually upon. So this is what this word steadfast is saying. It says that they continued with perseverance. They continued with diligence into the teachings of the apostles. And I find that steadfastly uh, uh, a profound word when we look at our Christian world today. Like are we built and planted to continue steadfastly in the faith? Uh, because many parts in the scriptures, it speaks about being planted with Christ. Uh, and I'm going to actually take you to a parable. 
uh, Matthew chapter 13, where Jesus speaks about these seeds. And we must understand that this is still taking place right now today. Uh, and it's Matthew chapter 13. I'm going to skip the parable and get to where Jesus actually explains the parable. And it's Matthew chapter 13 verse 18. He says, Therefore hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. Now, it says when they didn't understand it, the enemy immediately comes and snatches it away. How many knows that uh, in our day and time, there is many people, that the very first thing they tell me is, I read the Bible, I just I don't understand it, right? Uh, how many knows that God will open your heart and open your mind to understand? Um, but he's saying that the wicked one snatches this seed away. This is he who received his seed by the wayside, but he who received the seed on stony places. Now, this is a whole other type of situation that's going on. This is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. So he, he hears the kingdom of God. He hears the message of Christ. He, he hears it and receives it with joy. He's got his Bible out. He's excited. The sun is shining. The choir is singing. Everybody's feeling it, right? He's, he's in that moment with, with joy. I'll be glad to get back to those days myself. But uh, It says, yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because we are on a trajectory to be rooted and grounded in Christ. And the issue with this, this soil or this ground was not the fact that he didn't receive the words. He received it and was joyful. It was a, a wonderful experience. But when the trials came, when the sun came up and scorched that plant, he endured only for a while. What kind of faith do we have? Because I, I see this world and I'm like, dude, we are so far entangled into the world rather than in the kingdom of God. And the enemy sends one little storm our way and we get shook. But it's time that we dig deep and we grow our roots down into Christ. And grow in the love of God that we would be able to weather any storm. I want to tell you about weathering a storm. And uh, my son, my wife will be my witness. Number one, let me tell you about my son. My son, um, when he was five years old, I would play video games with him and I have no mercy. I mean, if you can't beat me, uh, that's your problem, kid. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell you, he's he's kept that in his mind for years. And, you know, he's been trying to beat me for a long time at anything we play, right? It kind of gives him a real competitive nature. I kind of wish I would have kind of just let him win a few times maybe. Um, but there's this, uh, we've been playing UFC. Now, I don't know if pastors are supposed to play that or preachers or whatever, but that's, that's what we do. Um, and let me tell you something. He has this one move. And my wife's the witness. She, it kills me. Because it, it doesn't matter who you pick, no matter what you do, he's just beating you up, dude. And you can't block it. Even when you block it, it's tearing you up. And I'm like, well, son, why, why don't you pick somebody else or do something different? This, uh, this ain't no fun to neither one of us. You're just doing the same thing over, right? He loves it. He's eating it up. He says, well, Dad. And then any time I really get to fighting him, he'll, he'll go back to that move. Boom, boom, boom. Knockout. And I'm like... And it's silly until yesterday, right? Yesterday I was scrolling through the stats and trying to find somebody that's going to beat this system. And there was only one guy. And he had a special move and it was called weathering the storm. And I just, I don't even know why I'm telling you this, but I, it, it really related to me at the time. Because now this dude just sits here because his ability is when he blocks, it don't cause no damage. He just blocks, and he's good. See, and that's what I needed because even when I blocked in the game, uh, he was tearing me up. 
So this one little special, special, special thing this guy had about him is what it took. And it was called enduring the storm. And, and it really made me think about the kingdom of God and how like, dude, endurance is so important when it comes to rising up in faith. What is it going to take to knock you off of your faith? What is it going to take to push you back from what God has called you to do? Because let me tell you something. The enemy is going to have some pushback. Right? So, but our goal is to get rooted and grounded in the truth and weather those storms, right? Oh, I love it. You know, so I love it now. So I got my guy. Now he won't let me pick him because, you know. But I wanted to bring that out because we need to learn how to weather the storms. We need to understand how to endure in the kingdom of God and walk with God, get our... Uh, film it from God. Right? So if this is a process and this is just a picture and God has given us a picture of this seed being planted and uh, uh, Jesus is telling the story of this parable and this seed gets planted, the first one gets taken away because they didn't understand. They did not understand. The second one, they received it with joy. I've seen this a thousand times in the kingdom of God. They receive it with joy. And then as soon as something happens, they fly away. They're back to whatever because they couldn't weather the storm. Let's keep reading. Now he who received the seed among... Okay, hold on. Yet... Okay, let's back up. <laughs> but he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet... He has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who received the seed among the thorns is he who hears the word. Now this is, this is something to pay attention to. Because this is also uh, something else that's going on in the background right now, in 2020, right now. This is the parable of, of the seed sower, and this seed landed among the thorns. So he's given a picture of uh, seeds ran, uh, landed by the wayside. It gets taken away immediately. The other seed gets uh, thrown amongst the stones. It couldn't go down and bear roots, Right? And as soon as the sun comes up, so it endured for a little while, but when the sun came up or whatever, it scorched the plant because it had no roots. Its source was not in Christ. <laughs> you understand? Uh, this is also a third situation that's going on. <clears throat> Even a more scary situation for somebody who knows God and walks with God. Uh, and it's those who fell among the thorns. It says, Now he who received the seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. But he who received the seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it who indeed bears fruit and produces. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. When God plants us into the kingdom of God, it is that we would bear fruit. You know, even John the Baptist comes along and when he says, he says, Hey, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a people worthy of repentance who bear fruits of repentance. And he says the axe is already laid at the root. So even our position in the kingdom of God is that we bear fruit, right? I, I really want people to understand that the tra trajectory of Christianity is not necessarily about the beginning and going to heaven. It's about being a child of God, even here on earth. Being like Christ in the earth. I really feel as if whenever tribulation comes in my life, I remember when I didn't understand it. 
when I didn't understand the processes of this growth and I fell away. But it reminded me of how Peter also was shifted like wheat. Right? And what Jesus says, but I prayed for you. And when you return, strengthen your brothers. And, you know, I realized that in our life, we're still being tried. We're still going through these processes, but the key is that we would grow. Because really, your, your faith hasn't been tested if uh, you're always uh, in the good place, right? Your faith is tested in the bad places. When things get hard and everything's shifting and turning against you, that's when the testing of your faith happens. But that's also what strengthens us and grows us spiritually. You don't grow when everything's good. You enjoy, you live your life, and everything's good. It's when the storm hits and the sun comes up, and all of a sudden you feel all that pressure and that pain. That's when you figure out what's really inside of you, where your roots really are, right? So... The parable of the seed sowers is a, a picture into the kingdom of God, into spiritual things, so we can look at the physical picture and, and, and picture in our mind what's going on so this seed gets planted. And its true intention is to grow up and bear fruit. And uh, the ones that were planted among the thorns, it begins to grow up. But before it bears fruit, it gets choked out. Right? And it says, by the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches. This is not what God wants either. God wants us to grow in the love of Christ and bear fruit. That is the kingdom. We're on a trajectory to learn the things of God and to grow in the spirit man and rise up and be like Christ in the spirit. Uh, I'm going to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 13. Sorry, when I get there, praise God. Uh, man, I love y'all. I'm hoping uh, that when I yell and stuff, you don't get offended by it. It's really just my passion. That's a uh, part of my 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 life i'm not even mad i just want to make that clear <laughs> it's just how i speak sometimes uh first corinthians uh chapter one verse 13 13 Well, let's start at verse 11. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you say, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am Cephas, I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Cephas and and. And, and Gaius, I ain't very good at these names, least anyone should say that I had baptized you in my own name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephenus, or Stephanus. <laughs> Besides, I do not know whether I baptized any other. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, least the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. Uh, and then I want to jump over to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building, according to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than this, that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. 
Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, with silver, with precious stones, with wood, with hay, with straw, one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. And I wanted to bring you here, uh, and let, let's let's read this part too. And I, I, brethren, this is verse 1, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you. Are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, or another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who then is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one, I planted, and Apollos watered. But God gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. The reason I wanted to point this out is, number one, even in the ministry, uh, every seed that's planted is God's plant. And I'm going to tell you, I can't make that thing grow. There ain't nothing I can do. But Paul explains it like this. One planted, one waters, but it's God who gives the increase. So uh, we got to understand that not only do we plant the seeds, we've got to water them. We've got to raise disciples to, to take on the work, to complete the work, to grow strong in Christ and rise up to be full of the love of God, right? And that's the trajectory that we're on. And, and starting next week, we're going to start finding out the depths of going into uh, what it is to add to your faith. Because we need a, a projection here. You know, we're not just here to worship God. We also have a mission. We have work to do for the kingdom of God. Uh, when we come into the uh, church building, you know, we praise God and we're a like-minded people and we're a body that's a building that's being built together for the work of God and the work of the ministry. But we've got to set our sights on what we're doing. We got to learn to not only make converts, but to make disciples. Not only plant, but water. And our intention here is to grow and become this body that's like a machine in operation when it comes to doing the work of God. That it produces not only the seeds, but brings forth fruit. And we're, we're on a mission, man. Every man of God that's come here before me, uh, you know, God has used that. God has planted and God has watered and it's brought forth you guys to even still be here. But now we're on another trajectory. I'm just a different man with a different gift. And it's God who brings us together and works through me. The same Holy Spirit that works through me will work through you. And now we're coming together as one for the operation of the body. That the hand would be able to reach and that the feet would be able to move. And that the eyes can see. But we come together as one. And what I found, it was very interesting that when Christ ascended, he gave gifts to the body and different gifts. And the eye cannot say to the foot, you're not necessary. We don't need you anymore. See, we try to operate in the kingdom of God as a one-man show. But our true objective as the church is to build this cluster of the body that operates in the kingdom of God, that does the will of God in building up the body. One last uh, uh, thing I want to read, and I know it's already been 30 minutes. Let me think of where it is. Um, it's Ephesians chapter 4. Because I want to keep us on this mission to understand what it is we're doing. Uh, because, you know, a people without vision, you know, uh, you know, uh, they're not going nowhere. We need to understand what it is we're doing. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4. 
And I, I just want to read this again. Uh, and it says this, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. But this is the whole reason. The whole reason was for this. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Somebody said we got work to do. Mm. For the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of who? The Son of God. To a perfect man, which is a mature man, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried around about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, whom the whole body joined and knit together by what? every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love so we understand like and man I love you and, and God uh, has put it in my heart you know he's got me here he's brought me here now it's time to get to work in building the body in building the kingdom and he has uh, put us all together for this time for this season to do the work of the Lord uh, and our main objective is to each part do its share to become the body. For the equipping of the saints is why I'm standing up here. Doesn't matter uh, what you call me. The truth is my objective and my mission is the same. It's to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. That goes to apostle, prophet, teacher, pastor, evangelist, whatever. You name it. We got the same mission. Now, we come together as one. For the greater operation of the, the work of the kingdom. That we would build it up in love. So first we have to learn to be disciples of Christ. Then we can make disciples of Christ. A real church is disciples making disciples. It's that simple. So I'm going to end this message. I hope that uh, every one of y'all were encouraged because, man... The same God who works through Paul is the same God who works through us. It's that same uh, flow, you know, his working in us and through us. We have to learn to rely on Christ and that power. Uh, in each and every one of us, God has given specific tasks, specific gifts, talents, and different things that will add to the body. And our goal is to become this machine, well, I call it machine, a well-oiled machine that moves according to the Spirit of God, according to Christ, and rises up and does the work. But we're like one body. Each part does what it does, and it works together for the growth of the body and the edifying of itself in love. We're a people on a mission. Praise God. Love y'all. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you so much just for uh, giving us this opportunity to fellowship together. I pray that you just deeply plant these seeds in our hearts, Lord God. Teach us to endure and become strong in the work of the kingdom. I pray that you just anoint each and every person under my voice, Lord God. Teach them to turn their heart fully to you and trust in you for every single thing in their life. I pray that you just move uh, in Gallatin. I pray that you... Uh, uh, allow uh, a real revival to take place in this city, in our hearts, and in your people. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.